A warm welcome to all. Today we have an eminent personality, a film critic and a national award winner for the documentary on Amanur Madhava Chakyar. He also has a state award and special mention for film journalism. He is also one of the jury members for selecting the Indian Panorama films for the 26th IFFK to be held on 18th March. Welcome sir. Sir, uh, do you think that uh, cinema has lost its relevance as it has uh, shifted to OTT platforms from the theatres? I would say cinema has not shifted to OTT platforms. I would say viewing has shifted to, a particular segment of viewing has shifted to OTT platforms. Because basically because COVID situation created, you know, a big hurdle for cinema in the sense it can't be shown in the public places or in theatres. People couldn't gather together to watch films. So films began to be shown in OTT platforms and you know a lot of films are released during the last two years through OTT platforms. But as, as far as cinema is concerned, I think cinema's you know the basic characteristic is that of being public. Publicness of cinema is what makes it most magical. Where people gather together in a particular place and watch big images on the screen in the dark, sitting in the dark together and watching you know, big images projected onto the screen. That is, I think that is what cinema is actually. That is the magic of cinema. And if you, and through time actually cinema has also, you know, through developments in technology, the viewing of cinema has actually shifted from you know, the big screen to television, to computer, to mobiles. So we are living in the, supposed to be living in the age of fourth screen, where you're watching your films on tablet or mobile phones, small screens. And you know, actually, if you compare the experience of watching a film in a theater and on any kind of personal device or home theater or whatever, all these domesticated personal spaces, the experience is totally different. The magic of cinema, uh, watching cinema in a theater has not been substituted by any of these technologies. So I think that still exists, though viewing patterns have changed. And these developments, whether it, uh, whether it when cinema migrated to television and later to OTT platforms and other devices, actually expands uh, the viewership of cinema. A new segment of viewership is created and cinema remains the same. I think the magic of cinema is in the la big screen, theatre, public experience. Is theatre losing its uh, popularity among the next generation as, uh, the, as there is a shift to the OTT platforms? No, maybe in the sense that it, at the present moment, it, theatres have become unsafe because you are supposed to you know, maintain social distancing and theatres, people can, you know, people have a lot of apprehensions about going to theatre. But once that is over, I think people come back to theatres because as I said, the experience of watching cinema in theatre is, you know, unsubstitutable, like it can't be substituted by any other thing. Because the magic of cinema, for instance, watching a film like Avatar or Interstellar or watching a, a Tarkovsky film on theatre in, on a big screen is totally different. So I think that magic still remains and as far as that magic remains, people will come back to theatres. Film criticism and uh, critical writing has been popular as it was before 15-20 uh, years. Uh, what is your say on that? You know, just like cinema and uh, developments in technology and development basically in communication technologies, like you now people are living in a social media environment where you're using WhatsApp and Facebook, people watch more films on YouTube. YouTube has actually become a, the biggest repository of cinema uh, in the world. Like you can watch any films there. Otherwise, it was impossible to watch an old film. That is there in YouTube. So YouTube, on the one side, all these social media has popularized cinema in a sense and has also become an archive of film uh, history. But on the other, there is also this kind of, you know, there is a sense of excess. There are too many things on social media. And, uh, and you know, earlier if, if in the celluloid era, you know, you brought a lot more attention to watching a film because you know that you are going to watch it only once. You won't be able to watch it again and again. So you, 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 had, you brought in a lot of attention to watching the film. Now what happens is like whether it be OTT platforms or you know, you're watching on uh, your computer screen or tab, you know that you can stop anywhere, you can wa watch it again, fast forward, fast, you know, uh, backwards or whatever. So it's become like a book, reading a book. So the quality of viewing has changed. Likewise, the quality of writing or the mode of writing has also changed. Because you know, earlier people used to read paper reviews or magazine reviews for watching a film. And this film stayed 
when the film is released in theaters, it went to, for instance, in a, in a situation like Kerala, it was released in cities, A-class theaters, then it went to B-class. It had a la longer life. A film being released had a life of two to three months at least. Running in theaters, some films even had more, you know, uh, time in the theaters. Now it is no longer there. Like number of theaters have come down, and also people uh, are also, you know, uh, have a lot of content to watch. So they don't actually have the kind of patience to watch a film and enjoy it, read a review, go back to it, or whatever. So there is a kind of impatience in watching films. There is also a kind of uh, criticism has become a kind of social media criticism, especially has become a kind of instantaneous criticism. You, you are actually reviewing a film sitting in the theater. Just, you just watch the film and you are writing a review or, you know, either praising it or ridiculing it. So it, it goes around in Facebook and WhatsApp and creates a kind of opinion about cinema, like a bias about cinema, which, you know, the, which most of the producers and directors are actually apprehensive about. Like it creates a kind of opinion about cinema, mostly uninformed opinion, just opinions actually, it's not a review, it's not balanced, it could be very biased. So this get this kinds of opin opinionated, uh, you know, information roams around or, you know, is becomes viral and it creates a kind of atmosphere where people are not ready to actually uh, see, a, watch a cinema, think about it. Then maybe if you want to say something about it, write about it or read about watching a film, that kind of time is not there. Like people are impatient, there is a lot of content around. So there's a kind of, I, I feel there is a atmosphere of impatience, which is actually multiplied, magnified by the atmosphere of excess. So there is excess, because if, if you're watching a film on OTT, you always know that you can watch other films. You can stop it here and go for others. So likewise, criticism has also become, it was earlier criticism in magazine or, you know, uh, newspapers was a much more responsible business. Because you know, when you write its own record, second, a lot of people are following you, reading you, uh, and it will affect, you know, people who, are, who want to watch the film. Now it's not like that. You're just expressing opinions, and which can be very biased, and which can be very polemical. Uh, I think it's most of the, 90% of the what is written on social media, on film, are opinionated. It's not actually reviews or any informed discussion about cinema or, you know, any kind of engagement seriously with the form, content, treatment or narrative of cinema at all. The social media criticisms, even without watching a movie, uh, is that influencing the viewers? No, it does affect, but the, in the long run, I don't know whether it will happen like that, because uh, as I said, it is instantaneous opinions. You, know, you watch the film and you, you, even while watching the film, people are putting their impressions on, you know, Facebook and all that. So you're, you're not actually thinking about the film. You're not actually taking the film, uh, looking at the film in a balanced manner, and you are just making opinions. So this creates a kind of, you know, uh, uh, a kind of opinion wave or goes viral and a lot of people are affected by it. But you should also see that even the film, make, film marketing companies are also doing it because they, they know this is going to happen and they also, uh, you know, they, 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 ha they have their own social media handles to, you know, uh, propagate their point of view. So it, So once, you know, when you get used to social media discourses, when you are in it, I think you know the character of these opinions. So the question is whether Two things. One is whether social media write, writings, whether somebody is going to be followed consistently. So that the critique, whoever is writing, making opinions on cinema, through time assumes or gathers a kind of character. So people look forward to his opinion. Because when he, you watch his opinion, you read his review, go for the film, then if you get anything out of these two you know, things, mm -hmm. I get a additional or something, a, a, an additional insight into the film or this critique gave me a new dimension to watching the film, I will go back to him again. But if it is opinionated and when, my, if, when I view the film, if, if I find this writing, social media writing as, you know, uh, useless, then I will, you know, I will also wo not depend on this writing. So through time, I think social media, because it is a new media, uh, there is a kind of, you know, uh, there is no, uh, you know, there's no gatekeeping in it. Anybody can write. So people make opinions. So I think by time, through time, it will, you know, it will become much more informed. In the sense, uh, people will take only those people who look at cinema seriously and who will add value to your viewing experience 
uh, they will go back to such writers, such critics, or such opinion makers. Otherwise, they will leave it. So I think through time, it will it may get cleared up. It may get much more refined and you know more insightful. That's what I think. Not at the moment. For the last two years, uh, the film festivals weren't conducted due to the pandemic. So uh, this time, uh, it has been conducted. So uh, what is your perception about it? No, basically, two years, most of the uh, important international film festivals became either were you know cancelled or uh, went you know online online festivals. But if you watch these online festivals, one advantage with online festivals was that like people could watch films at their own leisure. Second thing was. It was, as far as, you know, I think film festivals are not just about watching films. Film festival is about a gathering of people from different, different walks of life where you get to meet uh, directors and people who work behind the cinema. So you talk to them. There's a kind of social gathering, which is very, very important, which is uh, what, you know, uh, attracts people to a festival, film festival. So that is definitely missing. But if you look at the quality of interaction between viewers and uh, directors or you know uh, the kind of open forums and discussions that happen in a film festival the kind of participation and the quality of you know discussions I think that has become much more better in online modes so online modes have actually created because you can bring uh, filmmakers from all over the world into a digital platform and have a discuss a film which is not possible in a physical setting because it, it costs a lot of money people have to travel all these are avoided so as far as discuss discussions are concerned, I think it's done good for cinema. So I think the future of festivals will be most probably hybrid. It will have physical screenings. I think many of the interactions uh, uh, will be of online. We'll, we will people will talk to the filmmaker in a then and there in the on the theater screen. After the screening is over, he'll come on the screen and people will talk to him. That I think is a fantastic opportunity, which op which is made possible by this COVID situation, where this we experimented with online discussions and people coming from all over the world to talk to each other, which will get integrated into the film festival mode of physically viewing the films. I think that is going to work out well. As one of the jury members for selecting the Indian Panorama films for the uh, 26th uh, IFFK, uh, will that be a, a good package? Yeah, Indian cinema uh, for the last few years have been doing really well. A lot of very interesting films have come up, especially from uh, you know, you had a lot of good films from Marathi and also a lot of very interesting films from Northeast, like Trimanipur, Assam, Meghalaya. All those places are making a lot of new films, which actually if you look at post-independence film history, you won't find them at all. Like Assam, very few filmmakers like Manipur, Assam uh, and all that. Now you have a lot of films from there and also uh, you'll find a lot of films dealing with uh, very important social issues like displacement, caste. Uh, urbanization, all these issues are actually seriously dealt with by these films. They are also actually, they also work with uh, totally different kind of narrative styles. Uh, there are a lot of films which, where, which have, you know, which works with long takes and durations. For instance, there is one film called uh, Life is Suffering and Death is Liberation. It is a very interesting film, uh, which actually nothing happens, but it is a huge cinematic experience. Likewise, this Pebbles Kurangal from Tamil is there. A lot of films like that. There is the films Pedro from Canada. A lot of all these films have certain kinds of aesthetic, uh, you know, explorations in uh, cinema aesthetics. Very serious kind of, you know, way in which they they experiment with the form of cinema and also deal with serious content, which is very contemporary and much needed, you know, critique of the 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 kind of situation that we are in, whether it be about communalism, whether it be about majoritarianism, whether it be about displacement of people due to these kinds of development projects, uh, caste, caste conflicts, all these issues are brought up in a very, very interesting manner. So I think it is a package uh, to look forward to. Movies few years back and now, uh, how do you look on to that uh, difference? No, as I said, like what has actually changed, radically changed the form and content of cinema, the look and feel of cinema is the shift from analog to digital. With the digital technology, I think you can, uh, filmmakers can, you know, image whatever they can imagine. So there is a huge you know, possibility. Second thing is they can work with a very minimal crew. They can work with digital cameras. They can work with, they don't need to have such huge 
facilities to shoot a film, lighting and all those big, uh, you know, uh, uh, capital support. Even though that most of the films, as I refer to now from in Indian languages, are shot with a very minimal kind of, you know, uh, equipments or technical uh, support or capital backing. They are very simple films, but they they are able to experiment. They are able to make good films basically because it is digital technology makes it possible. With the digital cameras, you can move around, you can experiment, you can do a lot of uh, you know uh, things with even post production with digital interface and all that. You can do a lot of things. You can do a lot of experimentations with uh, film form and you know uh, imaging and all that. So that people are using it. That is a basic shift, and this shift has. Uh, actually impacted upon the kind of content that we are, you know, dealing with. You don't have to have, you know, very studio setting and, you know, uh, big uh, production companies uh, doing uh, films on big canvas and all that. But films have become much more fluid, much more flexible in that sense. So there's a huge shift from, uh, shift from mega themes to very simple kind of things, everyday things. Uh, local milieu and you know there is also this you know, one thing that is very much apparent is this compression of time. If you look at most of these new films they all happen in a day. The, what is happening is immediate like you know it does not have a big time scale and you know uh, big heroes, macho heroes you know running the show nothing like that. It is very simple. It is very much rooted in a particular milieu and it is very mundane kind of things. Very very ordinary. Uh, it, the whole theme and content of the film has been brought to human scale, not star scales where you know a lot of mega spectacular things happen, nothing like that. It has become simple, it has become direct, it has become much more you know flexible and you know accessible to people, both to people and also filmmakers. A lot of young filmmakers are able to make films because technology has become easier and they have also these kinds of new opportunities to take their films to the people. Due to the pandemic, the theatres have been uh, shut down. Is this uh, reducing the popularity of uh, watching movies in theatres? I don't think so. Like actually, OTT platforms have created a new segment of viewership for cinema. It like expanded its market, OTT viewership. Only thing is like, as I said, watching cinema in theatre and OTT platforms or whatever, you know, uh, gadgets that you have is totally different. That is one thing. Second thing is like, OTT, uh, Many of the films which are released during pandemic, early last year and all that, were not actually made for OTT. They were made for theatre, but due to circumstances, they couldn't release there. So they released it through OTT. So, but there will be a time, I think even in the present, you can see many films during the last year, which are actually aiming at OTT. So they have this small screen in mind when they make the film. But some films like, uh, you know, very spectacular films, big films, they were actually meant for theatres. And you know you lose that kind of you know the, the the quality of viewing, the experience of viewing in small screens. So they had to pay for it. But otherwise, in terms of viewing, uh, in any case, after television, actually, if you look at the economy of cinema, it is not box office collections that you know uh, contribute to the returns of cinema industry in general. Though some films may become big box office hits. Otherwise, most of the films actually made their money from television and other viewings, not from box office. That was the case earlier. That has changed. And with the coming of OTT, another platform is created. Apart from television, uh, OTT creates, provides another, you know, revenue opportunity for filmmakers. Even small films can be released through, just like Great Indian Kitchen, which could become a hit in OTT platforms. If, you know, theatres may, in theatres, it may not be as successful, actually. Because OTT was a blessing to such small films. So OTT is actually create not substituting cinema, but actually creating another platform and expanding the viewership of cinema. Thank you, sir, for being with us and enlightening us with your thoughts on cinema and its scenario. Thank you. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you.